Hi, this is Jack from Maths Forge, and in today's lesson, we're going to be solving quadratic simultaneous equations. In order to understand this topic, you should have covered lessons on solving simultaneous equations, linear ones, solving quadratic equations, and factorizing quadratics. I'd recommend you check out those videos, if you don't know what they are, by searching on our YouTube channel, or if your school or teacher has signed up to Maths Forge. You can find those videos if you click on the videos button for this lesson in your homework or practice tasks. So let's do the one star example. Find x and y given the following simultaneous equations. For quadratic simultaneous equations, you're usually going to have one equation that's quadratic and the other equation that's linear. The first step that you want to do is to rearrange your linear equation for x or y, whichever is easier. In this case, it doesn't make a difference. I'm going to go ahead and rearrange the linear equation for x. So we're going to take this equation here and we're going to rearrange it for x, which means subtracting y from both sides. This gives us x is equal to 7 minus y. Once you've rearranged your linear equation, your next step is to take your linear equation and substitute it into the quadratic equation. So instead of writing x squared, I'm going to write 7 minus y squared. And this is because we found x to be equal to this value. And now writing the rest of the quadratic equation, it's going to be plus y squared, which is equal to 25. The next step is to expand and simplify this equation. So my 7 minus y squared is going to be two brackets with 7 minus y. And then we have a plus y squared, which is equal to 25. Expanding the 7 minus y brackets is going to give us the following. 49 minus 14y plus y squared, and do not forget about this y squared here, plus another y squared. And this is equal to 25. So the expansion of these two brackets gave us these three terms here. And don't forget to include this plus y squared here. Simplifying now gives us the following. We have a y squared plus another y squared, which gives us 2y squared. And then we have minus 14y. And then we have a positive 49, so that's plus 49. And this is equal to 25. Now, to solve quadratic equations, you need to have them be equal to 0. So I'm going to take my 2y squared minus 14y plus 49 is equal to 25. And I'm going to get it to be equal to 0 by subtracting 25 from both sides. So if I subtract 25 from both sides, I end up with the following 2y squared minus 14y and then 49 minus 25 gives us 24. And now this is equal to zero. We can solve this quadratic equation rather than factorizing straight away. I can see that there is a common factor of two in every single term. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide this entire equation here by two to simplify it further. This is now going to give us y squared minus seven y plus 12, which is equal to zero. Now at this stage, we can go ahead and factorize this expression to find the solution to this equation. It's going to give us two brackets, which is equal to zero, and it's going to be a y and a y. And we have to find two numbers that multiply to give us positive 12 and add to give us negative seven. Those two numbers are going to be minus four and minus three. And now if we take each bracket and equal it to zero and rearrange for y, we get the following y is equal to four and y is equal to 3. So we found our solutions for y for these simultaneous quadratic equations, but now we have to find our solutions for x. And how we do this is by taking the rearranged linear equation, so this one here, and substituting the y values into it. So we're going to have for y is equal to 4, x is equal to 7 minus y, and in this case y is 4, so it's going to be 7 minus 4. This simplifies to give us x is equal to 3. And if we do this with the y is equal to 3, we're going to have 7 minus 3, which gives us x is equal to 4. So our solution is going to be when y is equal to 4, x is equal to 3. And when y is equal to 3, x is equal to 4. And if we check our answers, there they are. Now let's do a two-star example. Here we have x squared plus 4y, which is equal to 21, and x plus 2y, which is equal to 9. So just as we did for the previous example, we're going to rearrange the linear equation. And in this case, it's going to be much easier to rearrange this equation 
for x, which is going to give us 9 minus 2y. If you rearranged it for y, you would have had the following 2y equals 9 minus x, and then you still had to divide through by 2, which will give us y equals 9 minus x, all divided by 2. Now, you can work with this if you want, but I prefer working with this expression here when we have to substitute it into the quadratic equation. So our next step is to substitute this into the quadratic part, and this is going to give us the following. We have x squared, but x we can replace with 9 minus 2y now, so 9 minus 2y squared, and then we have plus 4y, which is equal to 21. Now we can expand these brackets and simplify them. So we're going to have 9 minus 2y multiplied by 9 minus 2y plus 4y, which is equal to 21. Expanding these brackets gives us the following. 9 times 9 is 81. 9 times negative 2y is minus 18y. And another minus 18y. Then we have negative 2y multiplied by negative 2y, which gives us positive 4y squared. And don't forget about this plus 4y at the end here, which is equal to 21. Simplifying this further gives us the following. We have 4y squared, which I'm going to write first. We have minus 18y minus 18y, which gives us minus 36y, plus 4y, which is going to give us minus 32y. And then we have a positive 81 at the end. This is going to be equal to 21. Now we need to get this equation equal to 0. And we're going to do this by subtracting 21 from both sides of the equation, leaving us with 4y squared minus 32y plus 60. And this is now equal to 0. I can see here that there is a common factor of 4 in every single term. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this further by dividing both sides of the equation with 4. This is now going to give us y squared minus 8y plus 15, which is equal to 0. We can go ahead now and factorize this and solve the quadratic equation. This is going to factorize into two brackets, which are equal to 0. We're going to have a y and a y, and two numbers that multiply to give us positive 15 and add to give us negative 8 are going to be minus 5 and minus 3. So we can see here that y minus 5 is equal to 0 and y minus 3 is equal to 0, our two solutions are going to be y is equal to 5 and y is equal to 3. Now, these are the y values. We still have to find the x values. And if you remember from the one star example, we're going to take our rearranged linear equation and substitute the y values into this. So when y is equal to 5, x is equal to 9 minus 2y, so 2 times 5. And this is going to simplify to give us 9 minus 2 times 5, which is 10. So 9 minus 10 is negative 1. So when y is equal to 5, x is equal to negative 1. And we're going to do this again with the y equals 3. x is equal to 9 minus 2 times 3. Simplifying this gives us 9 minus 6, which is 3. So our four solutions are as follows. When y is equal to 5, x is equal to negative 1. And when y is equal to 3, x is equal to 3. And if we check our answer, there it is. Now let's do a three star example. We're going to start just as we did with the previous two examples, and we're going to rearrange the linear equation first. So in this case, just by looking at this equation here, I know that if I rearrange for y, it's going to be easier to work with than if I rearrange for x. Rearranging for y gives us the following. 2y is equal to negative 14 minus 4x. And then we divide both sides by 2, which gives us y is equal to negative 7 minus 2x. If I had rearranged for x, I would have had to divide this 14 by 4, which would have given us a decimal or a fraction to work with. So rearranging for the y was the easier option. I'm now going to take this and substitute it back into the quadratic part. So we're going to write this out, 5x squared plus 4 times y. y is now minus 7 minus 2x. And this is equal to 41. If I simplify this further, it's going to give us 5x squared. And then positive 4 multiplied by negative 7 is negative 28. And positive 4 multiplied by negative 2x is going to give us negative 8x. And this is equal to 41. I'm just going to rewrite this equation. So I have my 5x squared first, my negative 8x second, and my minus 28 last. And this is equal to 41. 
we now need to get this equation equal to zero. And I'm gonna do this by subtracting 41 from both sides of the equation. This is now gonna leave us with 5x squared minus 8x and minus 28 minus 41 will give us minus 69. And this is now equal to zero. And I can see here that there's no easy way to simplify this further. So we're just gonna to have to solve this quadratic equation either by factorizing or by using the quadratic formula. In this case, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, which is x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And of course, a is equal to 5, b is equal to negative 8, and c is equal to negative 69. Inputting these values into the quadratic formula will leave us with two x values of 4.6, and x is equal to minus 3. Now, if we take our linear equation that was rearranged at the start and substitute the x values into this, we'll get the following. y is equal to negative 7 minus 2 multiplied by x, which in this case is 4.6. This simplifies to give us the following. y is equal to minus 16.2. And now if we do this for the x minus 3, we'll end up with the following. y is equal to minus 7 minus two times negative three. So simplifying this gives us the following, minus two times negative three is gonna give us positive six. So we're gonna have minus seven plus six, which is gonna give us negative one. And these are our answers. So if we check them, x is equal to 4.6 when y is equal to minus 16.2 x is equal to negative three when y is equal to negative one. And if we check our answers, there they are. You can see here that instead of writing decimals, they've given us mixed numbers, but this is perfectly fine. As long as your answer is an equivalent version of the answers here, you're correct. And that's it for the lesson on solving quadratic simultaneous equations.